When the truth came out, she cried and was asking me not to leave. She was sorry. She didn't love him. This could be our baby. She also said some stuff about how much she loved me and it will never happen again. Yada yada. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. Guys, we are back with a subscriber email story. Uh, it's been a little minute since I did one of these. Um, so someone emailed me um, and he told me, hey, a friend of mine sent me the link to you reading my Reddit story um, um, on Surviving Infidelity Sub. And... Uh, he went through and told he he didn't he kind of mentioned what happened to him a little bit uh but with him describing that I was like, oh man it's been so many stories you know regarding wife cheating after so many years and he left and whatever but um luckily so i was asking him like do you know the link to the story and uh he he found the story that i read for him that of, of his reddit post so um i'm gonna go ahead um he has a follow-up. He wants to follow up on how he's doing now, but I'm going to go ahead and play that story first. Um, this man, he caught his wife cheating. He moved on. Um, there's an, I actually did the update to that story also, um, where he talked about two years after being divorced from her and leveling up and doing his thing and moving on and telling everybody it'll get better, you know, and he just emailed me a few days ago. Um, and this is four years after um you know and, and him talking about how he's doing he titled this follow-up on a story you read um so guys if you want to get into the story and check it out i'm going to go ahead and play it first i'm going to play the story i'm going to play the update and i'm just going to play the story and the update i'm not going to put my thoughts in it i'm not going to put my comments in those you can just listen to it all the way through and then i'm going to add his follow-up which was, he sent me this four days ago. Um, and I'll get into that. But uh, guys, if you want me to read a story of yours, um, if you have a follow-up from a story that you've sent me before, send that story to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. But like I said, we're going to play that, that original story and update first. But you guys read the title? Let's just get into it. Two years after divorce, faithless ex-wife wants to reconnect. Post-separation. It had been over three years since I last spoke a word to my ex-wife. She reached out to me last week and was asking to speak with me. We had a one-hour phone call and that conversation brought this sad, miserable relationship to its ultimate end. This is my story. I found this form a few weeks ago and have been reading often. It has made me sad reading the outpourings of so many broken hearts. I am sorry to say it has also brought some comfort knowing I am not alone in my situation. I haven't posted before because what comfort or advice can I offer when my own marriage failed so badly? But after my conversation with my ex last week, I realized there are so many similarities in all of our stories. A series of checkboxes and almost all of them are checked off. That is what compelled me to share. We met in Tennessee. I was 22, she was 27. She was in her last year of nursing school and I was in my last year of military service. We were both working doing deliveries at a local pizza place for extra money. We hit it off and became friends and after a very memorable party one night, we became much more. She pursued me in truth, but I was attracted to her and more than happy to reciprocate. When my military time ended, I took her out to a nice dinner and proposed. I was so completely in love with her by that time. Our first year of marriage was great. I got along great with her. Family and my family loved her. We did almost everything together. Then in year two, things start to change. I was working full time and going to school at night working on a degree in civil engineering. I tried to make the time we had together special, romantic. But nothing changed the fact that there was a lot less of it. 
I could feel her pulling away and losing interest in me. So I dropped out of school. Wow. I made a judgment that my marriage was more important, and I told myself I could always go back later. Things didn't really improve, though. I had learned something about her. She is like a kid who tries her toys quickly. She becomes bored with it and moves on to a new toy. I tried to keep her engaged and keep things interesting. Gifts, vacations, different kinds of romantic bonding. It was like bailing out a sinking ship. She offered little in the way of help or encouragement. It's exhausting to try and save a relationship when you are doing it alone. Then the cheating behavior began. This you guys all know well. She checked off the boxes. Protective of her phone and laptop. More, more frequent absences from home. Complete withdrawal from intimacy. Affection from her went to zero and even hugs and kisses from me were coldly received. I've read this so many times in other posts here. It's like cheaters don't want to cheat on their AP with their spouse. I knew it was going on and I was highly motivated to catch her. We lived in an at-fault state, but she covered her tracks well. I couldn't prove it. I think she noticed I was checking out of the marriage. All my attempts at initiating affection or heck even talking to her for that matter stopped. After that, she tearfully confessed to an inappropriate relationship with a co-worker. <sighs> Always the co-worker. She swore it was never physical. She made a lot of promises and apologies. I had never heard the term trickle truth before coming here, but I suspect I was served up a hot bowl of it with a side of blame shifting. She wanted to work on us. She wanted counseling for us. I believed her. At least I chose to believe her. My heart and my intellect were not on speaking terms. We went to marriage counseling for a few weeks. That seemed to make her uncomfortable because the counselor was asking some very probing questions about the EA. I think she suspected, as I did, there was more to it. She discontinued after four sessions, but we seemed to be doing better. It was almost like I had my old wife back. I was very happy and decided to pull all my unproven suspicions behind me. This lasted about six months until the cycle began to repeat itself. Once again, she checked all the boxes like before. I confronted her about it twice. She blew it off as stress on her part or immaturity. A favorite thing for her to throw in my face over the whole relationship because of our age gap on my part. Intimacy between us stopped as she lost all interest in it and in me. And then it happened. I came home and found her at home early. She was sitting on our bed crying. I sat, I sat with her and was asking her, almost begged her to please talk to me. He told me she was pregnant. For a fleeting moment, I was overjoyed. Then my brain began to engage. I suddenly remembered how long it had been since we had intimacy. I could see it in her face. I was asking her how far along? Eight weeks. It had been over four months since we had, had last been intimate. I got up and I left the room. She ran after me. Looking back and comparing the conversations that followed against the accounts of people's experiences on this very sub forum, I am amazed how wayward spouses all say the same things. It was just that one time. I didn't mean anything. I only ever loved you. Of all the lies they tell, that last one stings the most. I told her I was leaving the house and I would be back in one hour. Then I would listen to what she had to say. I was shaking, fiercely angry, and in all honesty, it probably would not have ended well for either of us if I stayed. I drove to an empty parking lot and cried my heart out. I think I mean that literally because something inside me broke during that hour. My heart died. It turned into ice, and it still is to this day. When I went home, I was cold, emotionless. I didn't need to act like a gray stone. I had become one in truth. She insisted we could get past this. She saw how happy I was when she first told me before I realized. She commented on how we had wanted to start a family. She threw the baby's innocence in my face and how he, she would need a father. Wow. This went on for nearly 20 minutes as I sat and stared at her in complete an emotionless silence. Finally, she looked at me and was asking me to please say something. 
I told her she is asking for reconciliation, but nearly every word she is telling me is a lie. I told her if she wants me to even think about it, she needed to start by telling me the truth. The version of the story I was told after that is, it was the same AP all along, even from the prior year. It was always and only physical. She never loved him. She loved me. He is not interested in having any kind of relationship with her other than physical. He is pressuring her to, to get rid of the baby. She doesn't want to. She wanted a family and wanted it with me. I told her our marriage is over. It's been over for a year and a half. I told her to pack whatever she needed for three days and to please leave the house. I told her I'd meet with her in three days to discuss what came next. She refused to leave. She kept trying to talk to me. Ordinarily, her tears would have broken my resolve. But I looked at her that night and I felt nothing. The part of me that loves had died. I went into the guest bedroom and I locked the door. The next day, I spoke to several lawyers and hired one of them. The paternity of the child was more than enough proof for an, for an at-fault divorce. I had no desire to wait that long, and we discussed uncontested in mediation. When I got home, she actually tried to initiate with me. I was shocked and disgusted. I told her that would never happen again. We agreed on an outline for a divorce. The biggest asset was our house. The majority of our debt was her student loan. I gave up my ownership interest in the home so she could sell it. She was going to keep the baby and I wanted her to have that money. I wanted nothing but to walk away free. In the end, I kept nothing other than my Jeep, my military sea bag full of clothes and a few tools, firearms and military mementos. Mostly things that were mine before we married. Everything in that house, everything she had touched was just tainted to me. I wanted nothing from this marriage but to bury it in the past. The divorce finalized 13 months later. I saw her twice during the mediation. We barely spoke. I have a very simple life now. I bought and renovated a small house on the Gulf Coast. I bought a boat and go fishing almost every weekend. I have very few friendships and I have dated very little. I have trust issues now. I really don't enjoy the company of other people. I'm 27 years old now. I'm very physically fit and some girls find me attractive. But the idea of an intimate relationship with someone, trusting them to that level, I don't think I can do it. Not for a long time, anyway. I am the opposite of the man I used to be, in almost every way. All my love now is reserved for a happy black Labrador retriever named Stormy. She goes almost everywhere with me. I'm not exactly happy. I still get upset when something triggers me to remember my ex and all that happened. I still sometimes feel a tremendous and overpowering sense of loss. I know I have lost nothing because I really had nothing, but I can't help how I feel. The beauty of my job is I mostly work alone in, and in the outdoors, and I can often take my dog to work with me. If I haven't found happiness in divorce life, at least I found peace. I'll take that. Last week, the past I thought I'd buried two years ago reached out from the grave. She called my cell phone. I don't know how she got my contact information. It couldn't have been too hard, though. I wasn't exactly hiding. We spoke for an hour. It was amicable at first, and she made it sound as though she just wanted to see how I'm doing and catch up. But the hidden purpose of the call was to fill me out about some kind of reconnection. She gave birth to a healthy baby girl two years prior. Paternity was never in question because of the timing. The AP wasn't present for the birth and has had little interaction with his daughter. The life of a single mother is hard and although she was getting support from the AP, apparently she had to take him to court for it. She was lonely and unhappy. I told her I was sorry to hear she was unhappy, but it was not my problem. I told her she had broken my heart and it was still broken today. I told her in as many words I did not love her, could not love anyone and wanted nothing to do with her. I said to her that she made all the choices for all of us, for her, for me, for her daughter. She left me with only one choice, and that was to walk away from her. I asked her to not contact me again. The final similarity between all of our stories on this sub is this. 
A selfish person made a selfish choice and damaged the lives of three people, one of whom had not even been born yet. If there was one thing I wish I could make cheaters understand before they make a selfish choice, is that they are hurting everyone around them and possibly everyone around their AP. But if they are already selfish enough to cheat, it's likely they won't care. Wow. I posted my story here a few weeks ago. Check my profile if you are curious. To make a long story short, I am over two years divorced from my ex-wife. She had an affair, got pregnant, and decided to keep the AP's daughter. We have spoken once since, but she is dead to me emotionally speaking. I hope to never hear her voice again. In the three years since we separated and divorced, I've made a new life for myself, but it has been a solitary life. One that is absent of friendships and trust. After reading and conversing with many of you guys, I realized, as one Redditor put it, I should not be giving her so much power over my life. He was right. I thought I was living my new life on my terms. I wasn't. By keeping myself closed off and mistrustful, I was still making payments on an emotional debt I didn't even owe. When I left my ruined marriage behind, I said I took nothing with me. That wasn't exactly true. I still had my wedding ring. I don't know why I held on to it for so long. I kept it in a cigar box with a few other mementos. I attached no emotional significance to the ring, but in retrospect, I wonder if it's very present in my home was a siphon on whatever positive energy I might be building. Mm. The day before yesterday, my dog Stormy and I went fishing. December 31st was the last day of the season. On a whim, I took my wedding ring with me. I threw it into the Gulf of Mexico. It's now at the bottom of Suwani Sound, about 15 miles west of Long Cabbage Key. When that little silver of gold sank below the placid blue-green water of the gulf, I felt like it took an enormous load off my shoulders. And like an anchor, that ring sank that emotional load into the sand bottom, some 70 feet below. You guys were all correct. It is not enough to survive infidelity and divorce. It's time to live again. I have started dating again, a local girl I had met casually. We went to a party together last night and had a great time together. I owe you folks a debt. Your comments and PMs made me realize something I didn't even see myself. To the new folks who are just starting down this road, listen to, this advi listen to the advice you will receive on this sub. These people have been where you are now. Don't spend long mourning what you think you lost. That grief is a weight that you care caring for nothing. People you carry it for betrayed you. Freedom begins the moment you realize all you need to do is put it down. It's time to live again. Happy New Year to all of you. So if you guys listen to that, those first two stories, um, did those a little bit ago. This is his latest one here. He sent via email. So... Let's just go through his email and I'll just read it from the beginning. And um, guys, like I've always said, if you if you don't tell me to throw your name out there, I'm not. Um, and I'm going to always assume you don't want me to. So unless you tell me, hey, shout me out, shout this out for me. I've in the past shout, shouted out channels for people. You know, if you have a channel you want to shout out, put it in there. Just let me know. I'll do it. Um, but so his email, follow up on a story you read is the subject hello true i started following your channel a year ago a friend sent me a link to you reading my story from the reddit surviving infidelity sub i wanted to tell you how much i have enjoyed what you do i hate to say it but there is some comfort in knowing that not only have other guys endured the same bs i have many had it much worse i guess misery does love company I especially enjoy your take, advice, and comments on the stories you read. Your input has both a clarity and wisdom that has been earned from your own hard experience. Absolutely. I appreciate that, you know. And I've had in the past people say, oh, we don't care about your thoughts. You know, so that's why early, early on to this, 
in this, I used to do what I'm doing now. I would stop because I would have a thought and I would just talk. And people was like, oh, we don't care about your thoughts. So I said, you know what? I'm going to always just read the story and then do my thoughts after. And if you want to stick around and hear my thoughts, stick around. If you don't, I'm not going to force you to do it, you know. Um, so I try to break it up now, but I'm just doing it now because I just wanted to explain that. But uh, let's continue with his email. I am now four years post-divorce. My ex-wife had an on-again, off-again affair with a male co-worker and ended up getting pregnant by him. When the truth came out, she cried and was asking me not to leave. She was sorry. She didn't love him. This could be our baby. She also said some stuff about how much she loved me and it will never happen again. Yada yada. Isn't it amazing that cheaters all tell the same tired lies? Of course, there was no coming back from that and 10 days later, I left Tennessee and moved to Florida in a whole new life. Divorce took a year and a month and was pretty painless. I was, I last spoke to her a year ago this month. She is suffering the consequences of the choices she made, as do we all. These days I spend my time doing a job so easy, I can't believe they pay me to do it. It doesn't pay much, but my lifestyle is very simple, so I don't need much. I bought and restored a hurricane-damaged house for cash. I own my truck and boat. Also a fixer-upper I restored outright. I have no debts. I watch the sunset of the Gulf every night. Follow the Marlins and Dolphin games on the radio on my porch and take my dog fishing on my boat every weekend. I only date casually and have no intention or desire to ever ha again get married. I will never cede control of my life happiness and peace of mind to someone else again not even partial control now four years down the road there are three bits of advice i'd love to pass on to the true story nation don't let other people define what your recovery should look like don't let others even the folks who love you and care about you tell you that you haven't gotten over what happened to you if you know you have then you have my sister parents friends all think I'm still sad or still dealing with trauma from the from the divorce because I have no interest in serious relationships. There is something about the society we live in that breaks down when a man says a hard no to marriage. Heck, it's not like we didn't give it a shot. I know a wise man never says never, but if I do, if anyone in our position does, it must be on our terms. Marriage, is ask, marriage asks a lot from the both partners, but from men, most of all because but from men most of all because we ultimately bear the lion's share of the financial and deal in real world consequences of its failure. I would never discourage anyone from going where their, their hearts lead them. Just remember, a lot is being asked of you. The fruits of your labor, the dreams you have for yourself in your life and future, these are the gifts you give to your partner and children. This is the sacrifice that is asked, it, and we must make it willingly. If you have a faithful spouse and happy family, those sacrifices are an investment that will pay you dividends all your days. But when your spouse betrays you, dishonors you, dishonors your trust, and is asking for you to stay after doing it, they are demanding something else from you. Your dignity, your self-respect, your sense of self-worth. Never ever sell these for any price. Once lost, you will never get them back, and all the sacrifices you made up to that day will be hollow. You will be hollow. Walking away from betrayal isn't just the right choice. It will save your life. Last bit of advice is to understand and remember that in our lives, in the reality, in the reality we all exist in, everything is transitory. All things run their course and end. Even marriages and all endings are sad, but they are also inevitable. Do not linger on the end of marriage or relationship. Acknowledge that it has ended and let it go. Don't cling to cheating spouses or damaged relationships because what came before the cheating was good. It may have been good, but it is over. Let it go. To cling to what is lost is vanity. Thank you, True, for letting me pass on my thoughts today. 
And thank you for your channel and your work in putting this content out there. It isn't just another YouTube channel. It's a library of experiences. It's a roadmap to recover and can even be light in the dark for guys going through the worst days of their lives, showing them the way out. Keep doing what you do. And if you ever find yourself in Florida and want to go fishing, there is always a seat on my boat for you. Nice. Nice. Salute to you, man. Thank you for that, man. It's, it's cool to hear that. You know, I, I'm glad that there's guys here that listen, that, that do appreciate and understand what I'm doing and what I've been doing from the beginning. Um, guys, I, I came on here December 2018. I didn't know anybody was going to listen to me. Guys, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I had these these I had this headset that I used to use for games. Um, and it was like a really cheap headset and had a microphone attached to the headset headphones. I just plugged it in. I've always known about OBS. I've always known how to use it. Um, and I had a different background at the time, not the background that I use now that showed my living room and everything. Um, but I had a totally different background and I just recorded. I just started talking guys. I was so depressed at that time. It was, it was ridiculous. I was in a situation. We were living together and I was going through it and I had nobody to talk to. I was living in a different city and I just had found out a bunch of crap. And I was just lost. Like, how could I be so stupid? I started thinking about how, man, I, I didn't go to, I, I was supposed to, I was supposed to continue with grad school and, and do all this stuff. And I, and I didn't do it because I was too busy trying to make somebody else happy. And in the end, that person repaid me in a very crappy way. Um, so I came on, told my story. And then I just saw so many people in the comments commenting, dude, I've been through that. You know, and then some people, eh, dude, you're an idiot. You, oh, it sounds like you used to be a simp or whatever, you know, but most people are like, dude, I know what you're going through. You'll be all right. Oh, I've been through that. And people started sharing their stories. So I told more of what I went through and I just started doing it like every other day, sometimes every week. And, and then, and then I started reading other people's stories and I told them, hey, send in the email. Uh, you guys are writing these stories in the comments Send an email. I'll read it for you. I started reading articles and just like he said in this email, this channel has become just a collection, a library of experiences, a roadmap to recovery. Man, I love that, dude, because that's what it is. And that's what I intended for it to be. You guys see. When I when I begin my videos and I when, I when you know I play a little sample of what's going to be in the story and then that intro, you guys read that, learn from other people's, learn from other people's mistakes. I mean that I meant for this. That's why you know a lot of you know what guys you guys know how many you guys know how many stories I've done I knew you guys wouldn't like and you straight up told me I've had people tell me I'm unsubscribing. This guy's a doormat and a simp. You think I stopped putting those types of stories out? No. Because you guys didn't see the emails I got when people were saying, dude, thank you. Like that made me feel good. I was doing the same stupid thing. I'm going through the same stuff. I don't want to be like him. So I know I, I know I've made the right decision by moving on. Now I know what decision to make. But knowing that people are being helped, people are learning from this, that means a lot to me. And I love that I have this, 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 this space, this channel where there's this collection of different stories where people can learn from or people going through anything similar they can learn from. So I want to say salute to everybody out there who understands what's going on here and what I, what I'm trying to put together here. 
I love a great I love a great story where she gets destroyed and all that stuff, but all I wanted to do was tell the truth with these stories. What really goes on? Whether it's good, whether it's bad, and this guy, he moved on. He did the right thing. You know, someone can learn from his story. The story I I read it, you know, some time ago. People listen to it and they and they learn from it. You know, it could be a story that just drives you crazy. This guy is a simp. You know, if it's a story where this guy just keeps going back to this woman and getting hurt and getting hurt and getting hurt. It could be annoying. And you can be like some of those people who wrote in comments, oh, I'm unsubscribing from you because this story sucks. I don't care. I don't care. But somebody else learned from it. Somebody really learned from that. Because somebody was going to do the same dumb thing. Going back to the same stuff. Some people just need to be told that, hey, wake up. No, don't do that. So salute to everybody else. Salute to everybody that understands. Salute to you, sir, for following up. I'm glad your friend sent you the video of me reading your story. Um, Great story. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed this follow-up and how he's doing now. Um... Salute to you, man. Feel free to write in whenever you want. Guys, if you want to send in an email, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. I'll catch you guys at the next one.